Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And now that it's been a few hours since the earnings call ended, since since I made made my video, just wanted to kind of get your guys' take. You know, after taking it all in, right? You gotta you gotta look at it, then you gotta break it down, then you gotta look at it objectively. And then there's a few things that I missed earlier that I wanted to also discuss in this video. So, again. T-Mobile had exceptional growth, so no surprise there for me. And the only thing that I was shocked about, and I'll be very honest, is that they dropped their churn as low as they did. That is something that they really didn't stress enough during the earnings call, I believe. Now, they did state that they were industry leading and they beat the competition. And, and that's not taking anything away from Verizon and AT&T. They also had very low churn. Verizon came in at 0.83%. AT&T came in at 0.79%. The fact that T-Mobile went from Q1's churn was 0.89%. Their Q2 churn was 0.77%. It's a pretty big increase or decrease, I should say, within just one quarter. I was expecting T-Mobile to get that low in the second or third quarter of next year. Right, I was anticipating the churn to go maybe from 0.89 to 0.85 or, or something like that. But to increase their churn that dramatically, in my opinion, I think that that shocked and surprised me. I don't know how you guys felt. Everyone takes it different. Some people are, are saying that it's the economy and everybody's staying put. And T-Mobile is the one that they're wanting to stay on the most because they have the best value, cheapest cost. And, you know, that might be a factor, but still dropping their churn that that low that quick i think that's that's pretty shocking in my opinion and that's something that t-mobile said they would do and they wouldn't stop until they get there and like mike Siebert said during the earnings call he might trade blows back and forth the next few quarter on churn until they eventually leave verizon and at&t in the dust on churn so next quarter they might be one or two higher than at&t for an example but then eventually they think that, that uh, the churn will settle in and they will be the leading churn profile in the industry moving forward. So that was one thing that I, that I, like I said, that I felt like was a surprise to me. I don't know if it was to you. Let me know in the comment section down below. So the next thing that they also discussed was business, enterprise, government agencies. And, and uh, something that I wanted to also talk about is they disclosed again that they had the biggest growth on business ever in the company in this quarter and lower churn than Verizon on business. So that's good to see, right? Regardless of how you feel about T-Mobile, regardless if you say their financials are not there, which they aren't, right? They're not anywhere close to AT&T and Verizon yet, right? For an example, T-Mobile's net income was $2.2 billion. Verizon's net income was $4.8 billion. So they still have a ways to go. So I acknowledge that. For example, free cash flow for the quarter, Verizon was at 5.6 billion, AT&T was at 4.2 billion, Verizon was at 2 I mean uh, T-Mobile was at 2.9 billion. So you guys can see there's a gap still, right? 5.6, 4.2, 2.9. But year over year, T-Mobile had a 2.3 billion dollar increase on free cash flow year over year. So it's getting better. Looking forward to see in Q3 if they can get closer to $3 billion on free cash flow, maybe get uh, surpassed that $3 billion mark. I think that would be great. As long as they can get closer to the competition, I think they will be fine. Um, I don't expect, even five years from now, whatever in the future, I don't expect T-Mobile to be toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with Verizon and AT&T on financials. Just their competitive nature, the way they, they operate, I don't see that happening. You know, is it possible? Maybe, right? But I think in the ever-growing market that T-Mobile is trying to grow in, I don't think it allows for them to be toe-to-toe -to -toe on, on financials. They don't. They don't charge the same. They they offer too many free lines. They, you know, that's just something that they do to continue growing, and I think that's okay. Do they gradually increase prices in certain sections? Yes. Like during the earnings call, Mike Siebert said that, yes, they could potentially raise pricing on fixed wireless access on sometime in the future. So that th those are all possibilities, but they try to treat the customer 
the best that they can to keep them on board even when there's a price increase. Right? Meaning there's a there's a there's a great network, there's great customer service that the customer has experienced before to where if there is a price increase, they're they're less likely to churn, right? If you have if you're on Verizon, you've had issues with customer care in the past, you might say, okay, I'll take this price increase. Then you have more issues with customer care. And then it's like, no, 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 no. I'm not dealing with this. They keep increasing prices. The customer care is bad. I'm leaving. That's how it's viewed. People have, some people have very little patience. So you got to try to treat everyone the best to keep them on board as long as you possibly can. And that's where the CLVs come, come, for, uh, come in, right? That's the long, longevity of the account. T-Mobile thinks that generally the uh, some of the 55 and older crowd, they're more premium customers that are coming in, right? Credit-wise, I assume. And they they say that those accounts, although they pay less ARPU, they stay longer than any other account. So they kind of they kind of weigh all that in, and that's that's why their ARPU is generally flat because they don't have anything to really drive the ARPU higher, right? If they raise price by a dollar or two on some fee or if they you know like they took away the auto pay discount on credit cards and now if you want auto pay you get debit if you don't you pay the increase you know people come in and they say well that's an arpu increase while it should be it kind of balances it out because t-mobile does all the free lines they do the 55 and older plan the military 40 percent off so that balances it out Right, so T-Mobile never really has a big increase on ARPU. That's why their strategy now is ARPA, average price per account. Right, not average price per user, but average price per account. So now they're trying to attach watches, tablets, home internet. All of that is very important to, and I think it's the most important metric to T-Mobile because that lets them know like, hey, if this is over 1% increase, that means we're making money. That means we're profitable. And that means, you know, our sales team is also pushing this. Because you got to remember the, the retail, the front line, they got to get people into those devices. They got to bundle them up. So that's that lets T-Mobile know overall, like, hey, you know, the, the team that nationally is doing great, the front line, because our ARPUs are going up. So that means people are attaching stuff. People are buying into it. And they're deepening the relationship as T-Mobile calls it. So that's all very, very interesting to T-Mobile. But moving forward, you know, just a bit of an outlook. Um, I think T-Mobile will remain as comfortable as they've been, right? They, I looked at the executive team at the earnings call today. They looked very comfortable, very confident in their, in their talk. And of course, that's, that's how they should be, right? Very positive. They... I still think they have an uphill battle when it comes to rural areas. And I think they know that too. But of course, they're not, they're not going to disclose that publicly. There's, there's still more work to do on that part, more sites to build. And I think all of you know that. I, th I know that too, of course. Um, I acknowledge it. So there's more work to do there. And then they got to really figure out how long term, how they adjust everything, right? If they, if they want to incorporate a millimeter wave strategy... They have to they have to put a separate capital aside to specifically deploy that how it's deployed and and when does it make uh, economic sense to deploy it that'll be up to T-Mobile right they're talking to OEMs they're talking to vendors they're trying to figure out okay if I can get this router to do millimeter wave on the outside of the house can we can we make it happen you know that's kind of what whoever they're talking to Arcadian Nokia whatever whoever whatever vendor they're talking to. You know, they're trying to see if they can if they can make it happen. So they're they're trying to they're trying to look at everything. They're trying to run an analysis. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. And that's kind of what they what they said at the earnings call today. But again, they have to set aside a separate capital for that type of allocation. It can't come out of the nine to ten billion. There's just not enough money to go around. So in the future, they would have to approach it at some analyst day and say, OK, we're still spending the nine to ten billion. But. We're increasing the capex by three billion, specifically for a millimeter wave deployment. That's how they would have to present it, in my opinion, in order for it to make sense, and in order for some of us 
network enthusiasts to get excited about, right? If they say, oh, nine to 10 billion, and we'll take out a $3 billion chunk to deploy a millimeter wave, I'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm okay on that. You know, that's, I mean, that's cool for you, but what about the towers? What about the small cells? What about adding C band DOD in the future? You know, that, that kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion. <clears throat> but that's something that, I, that I'm looking forward to, right? A, a, a more substantial, larger capex. They're trying to be as cash, cash efficient as they possibly can. So they don't want to go beyond the nine to 10 billion because that'll throw off everything, right? That'll lower the net income for them, probably. That'll lower free cash flow for them because they have to take that out of the free cash flow to increase CapEx. So they're not going to do that. They're going to efficiently run at the nine to 10 billion, continue to grow the company as quickly as they are, continue to try to keep that churn as low as possible so they can post those big numbers, right? The financials are going to increase uh, whether they want it or not. Right. Of course, they want the financials to increase. But as they continue growing, the finances are going to do two to three percent each quarter. They're going to in keep increasing, going up and up and up as they continue to growth and their strategy. Also, you know, fixed wireless access is, is an important part to that. Like they like they discussed today during the earnings call, it is based on the extra capacity model. But you got to you got to look at it from the bigger picture, right? Right now, they want to grow to the single digits, the seven to eight million. How do you get beyond the seven to eight million without one, affecting the mobile users experience and two, without spending too much capital where it may not make sense anymore because now you've spent so much capital that you can't make a profit from it, if that makes sense, right? See, right now, the 9 to 10 billion, they're just going and upgrading the already existing network. And they're pulling in profits from that. So that's really accretive and, and, and pure profit in that sense because they're just using what they already put on the site for mobile users. And that goes for businesses too. They're using the same towers. But eventually, as they load that up, and they talked about that today, you know, as they keep continue loading it up, and they are, and they are loading it up, I mean, they just... They just added a total of 1.6 million new net additions. I mean, that's crazy, you know. They added 124,000 prepaid customers. They added a bunch of business customers. That's that's, and they're getting big business accounts. I mean, they're just loading up the network, which is fine. That's that's how you make money. That's how you monetize. But they they have they have to really come to the realization, like, hey, we really have to start spending more if we're going to continue loading up the network the way we are, and and. Uh, make it a great experience overall for everyone involved, right? You, you can't pick and choose. Everyone has to have a decent experience on the network for that churn to be as low as it is and still create that CLV to where they stay longer term and for you to make, you know, the profits that you need to make to get your finances to where, where they need to be. So just kind of want to talk about that, how I felt, you know, today was good for them. They're, they're still behind, right? They're still behind on overall size of network. They're still behind on the finances, although they're in increasing their own finances year over year. They're still behind at and Team Verizon overall, right? Net income, free cash flow. Uh, Verizon said they would be at $17 billion by the end of the year, maybe eighteen. AT and t said they'd be at sixteen. So that's, you know, T-Mobile coming in at 13.2 to 13.6. So, you know, it's big for t-mobile they've never had that type of free cash flow but they're still lower compared to their peers right the, com the competitors so so there's always a disconnect there but i think t-mobile is what's needed right now for competition there is no fourth carrier um that's really competing at the type of scale that t-mobile is i know dish is coming in they did something with amazon but you know dish still needs time to to really get that going right we always bash t-mobile about not spending enough about backhaul, you know, where's Dish going to come up with all that money? Dish is only spending $2 billion a year. How, are, how do they even have money for an OPEX to push the, the backhaul as high as, uh, as the three competitors, right? Just, just briefly discussing that, but that's just, that's just the reality of it. T-Mobile is the best we have right now if you consider competition to really bring it to Verizon and AT&T to maybe force them out of the three-year uh, phone leasing, right, to get them back down to two years to maybe drop the price to get them to include a NFL Sunday ticket, 
to get AT&T back to including value. That's all got to come from competition. And T-Mobile is right now the only player besides cable that's really pushing the envelope on the mobile network operator side in terms of competing and taking customers. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.